Welcome to Market Buzz. I'm Greg Schnell, the Canadian technician and host of the Market Buzz. Each show, we do a deep dive into different industries using weekly charts to see what is happening on a long timeline. Please follow me on Twitter at Schnell Investor, and you can also find my blogs on ospreystrategic.org as well as stockcharts.com. So the tech sector has continued to perform well and um, just just keeps going on its own. Uh, we're seeing um, markets around the world change. And so what I wanted to cover off today is some of that. And we're going to look around the world and just see what else is going on. Um, one of the beautiful things in America is its tech sector is unlike any other economy in the world. Um, so it, it really does have... Uh, unique position in the world uh, for that specific sector and uh, currently it's just literally outperforming everything. So starting the month at the top of the charts for the year, so that's pretty good. Um, all the big names gapped up on Tuesday. I will say all of them closed below the highs of the day and three of eight went negative on the day. So perhaps they're, they're pausing a little bit Anyway, with that, I want to take a look around the world. If you like the work we do, try over, try the membership service out at uh, ospreystrategic.org. You can always try a one-month trial offer for just $7, and uh, we'd appreciate you taking the time to try it. Uh, there's a complete Osprey Opportunities page that's all set up to help you find stocks in different sectors that are performing really, really well or industry groups. And it's been, um, obviously it's been a tech rally here for a month. Um, so when those, those rallies occur, um, and we're trying to make sure that we're, we're getting better at this, um, finding the rallies because we're finding that the breadth in the market isn't, um, what I would expect for a bull market. That doesn't mean it's wrong. It's just, just not what we've seen in the last 25 years. Um, so the way the market is currently setting up, what we want to be um, trying to do is get down to an industry level or some sort of a smaller group specific and try to take advantage of that. So we're doing that over at Osprey Strategic now. Okay, so with that, um, let's head over to the charts. What I'd like to talk about here, first of all, I'm just going to uh, go get this. I had it all set up and then I moved it. Uh, I'm sorry about that. So here we go, global indexes. And what I... The reason it's month in, so that, that makes it uh, a great time to look, and we're also almost halfway through the year, really important time to just kind of check uh, where we're at and where, where I think we're going. So first of all, I, so a lot of these, I've got a monthly chart and then a weekly chart associated with it, and I, I really want to emphasize the macro picture. So this is not a, a fine-tuning exercise. When we look at a global chart or, or charts from around the world, we don't have to get into the nitty gritty of each company within there. Um, most of us would know some of the names from each country probably, um, but obviously in Germany, it's the industrial sector, um, the, the car building is huge and they're, they're one of the biggest um, engineering uh, countries in Europe. So with that, we see lots of things going on here. Now, one of the things to notice is the month of May. So you think about how the NASDAQ closed, just racing towards the top. Um, Germany basically started where it finished the month and it tried higher, tried lower. And the important thing looking back here is that we're at prior resistance. And what does that mean? So in 2021, the market shot up to the highs in October and then in, um, sorry, in November and then in January. And at that point, the price earnings ratios kind of topped out and that's when the market started to pull back. So um, we're sitting right around this line here, call it 16,000. And that was also the top in the July, August timeframe. So this is becoming a more significant resistance. Again, it was also the top here in um in the month of April. So we've got kind of six or eight months here where every time we get up to this level, it's a bit challenging. And again, we tried to, to outperform. Now, this is also the, the second part of the equation is you have your momentum indicator really, really high here for the um, period of 2021. And now what we see on the monthly indicator, and it's still going up. So it's still very bullish. There's no change in tempo yet. 
I think what we want to be aware of is just the fact that we're resting up against the the uh, prior highs here. And we don't want to see this roll over. Now, if it does start to roll over, usually on a monthly chart, by the time it rolls over, the chart's actually doing significant downward damage. Um, so let's just be aware of how uh, how important the current level is for the German market. And again, it's been one of the bigger leadership markets in Europe. And the other thing you'll notice here is the highs in 2017 kind of got tested in 2018. We didn't really get quite up to the, the same highs, but kind of at the level where the majority of the price action uh, peaked out in those latter months of 2017. And then we saw the same thing in 2019, got up to the same sort of region and struggled in around there. And then in 2020, the first part of the rally struggled there and then they finally broke out late so so this whole area call it 13.5 to 13,000 to 13.5 was a pretty big hurdle um, for Germany uh, for three or four years and then finally broke out now we're up against one more of those hurdles and again we tried to go higher for the month but weren't able to do that so let's get into the weekly chart now again the the important thing to to think about is what we want to be aware of is if the rest of the world was going to go into recession or something bigger. And again, we see this. These are the previous highs that I talked about on the monthly chart. And here's Germany up here again, two weeks ago, pushed up and then really couldn't hold it last week, gave it back. And this month or this week to start the, uh, the week, both Monday and Tuesday, uh, the chart basically pulled back a little. So um, too early to say how it ends the month, but we'll also see this big diagonal line. And what we're watching for here is, does this trend start to get broken? And I don't know why I didn't attach it properly. Um, maybe let's just go fix that. There's a couple of other things to notice on this chart. And I'm taking a little bit more time with Germany than I'm going to, obviously, with all the other charts. But I want to explain what's going on here on the chart so that people understand. So um, this is my relative strength compared to the S&P 500. And really Europe had um, gone through a period where, you know, since the lows in mid-August of 2022, the uh, this is when Germany started to outperform the US and then uh, briefly pulled back here in March. And now we've got this trend line. And I would just say that the relative strength trend is breaking. And for me, that's a big deal. When relative strength starts to break, typically what that means is money's going to move elsewhere. So um, whenever you can kind of draw a trend line across these places and you start to see a, a breakdown. Now we do have the PPO here going on a sell signal so far this week. We haven't got closure on the week. Um, but if we were to just mark the sell signal. We've also got a lower high now than we had prior in the February, March timeframe. So even though we pushed up to prior to higher highs, we actually had lower momentum as we went into those highs. So this is looking a lot more stressed as a chart and, and maybe it takes a while to play out like it did through 2021. Um, we are at a high level, but typically if it got down below 2%, we'd want to be more cautious. So Let's just stay with that and watch where we're going to go from here. Now, uh, so here's the French market and the French market's doing the same thing, but it only got up to this high once in uh, January, 2022. And then in 2023, briefly exceeded it, but you can see quickly pulled back in the month of May and wasn't able to hold the breakout. Now we also have a lower high in momentum here. And one of the, again, one of the hurdles on the monthly chart to think about is that, you know, it's a really big picture. Now we're right up against the top of the Bollinger Bands here. That's this gray band that goes all the way down here. And typically you can run up against this for a while. Well, we ended up closing the month at the bottom. Doesn't mean it's over. You can wobble around as you continue to work your way higher. Um, what we want to watch for is does this momentum roll over and we start to see a significant decline. Unlike the German chart, the history, the histogram on this one, which measures the distance between the actual PPO line and the signal line, that distance got narrower this, this month. 
So it does tell us that the upside momentum is slowing. And this is an important place to, to just watch the charts. When we go to the weekly chart, again, we broke out briefly for the month of April and then pulled back in in the month of May. Five years, four years on here. Let me just shrink it up to three. I'm just going to update this and save it. Um, what I want to show here is the relative strength broke here roughly right around the highs and is starting to work its way lower. We've now broken the uptrend in price in France. And so um, this isn't looking very good. Now it's early in the week. Uh, perhaps we can restart the flame. Um, I will say that this line is going to become pretty important if it doesn't break back above both the horizontal line and this di the uh, angular line or the ups uptrend line. And the reason I say that is this is being watched by everybody around the world. And when you start to roll over at a prior high, so what this looks like is a failed breakout, and then you want to be careful how the market reacts to that. So I would just say for both both France and Germany, um, the, the market is getting weaker now. We've been on a bull market signal here, so it could just pull down to the 40 level and bounce back up. Um, but that currently that's what we're looking at. Here's the Amsterdam exchange. Now this also includes Belgium and Luxembourg uh, called the Benelux countries a lot of times, but they, I believe it's the three exchanges in there. Anyway, you've got the big uptrend here and you've got a, a lower high coming in quite a bit lower and not able to take out the prior highs. And again, when we look back all the way to the year 2000, we're just barely sitting above the highs of 2000 for the Dutch exchange. Now, you've got a big high here and your momentum is rolling over. But what I want to show you is on this chart here, you didn't even get the... Um, histogram into positive territory here and it's already starting to flatten out. So this is a pretty important place to watch the chart. It's basically um, suggesting that the, the rally it's had is kind of coming to its fruition. Now let's go look on the weekly chart. And again, uh, made the high in February, hasn't really been able to break out. So when we think of, of the North American market, how, how the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ have outperformed significantly, um, this smaller market is not keeping up at all. Now, Sweden is one of the charts I really like to watch. Um, and the reason is it's Krona is part of the, it, it, they kept the separate currency, but they're still involved in the EU trading um, area. And so this this chart tends to move before the the rest of the, countries. And so it's always a sensitive one for me to just at least watch. Now, the PPO is sitting right around zero on the monthly chart. So that's weaker than the German or the uh, French or the Amsterdam markets. And if it was to roll over here, I think that would be a pretty big deal. So we have the blue line here. This is the 20 month moving average, which is also the center of the Bollinger Bands. And one of the things that you'll notice is in a bull market, you stay above the the Bollinger Bands for the most the middle of the Bollinger Bands, and in a bear market, you go below. So back in 15, 16, and back in 11 and 12, and back in the 07 to 09 financial crisis, you were below. Well, we're hovering right around it, so it's a good place to watch. Looking in on the weekly chart, what we're seeing here is this thing just hasn't been able to get any sort of momentum going. And we're a long way from the 2021 high. So this chart's quite a bit weaker. Relative strength, definitely uptrend is broken. We're making a lower high. And so far this week, um, you can see that this is starting to uh, roll over onto a sell signal again. So you've got your high in February and now a lower high here. So that divergence is is telling us to at least be careful. And again, we're right around that 2% level. We don't really want to see this start to lose more momentum. You can see back here in uh, 2021 when it got around that 2% level. That was really when we started to see the problems. Now, um, again, we only got up to the 2% level. We didn't get way up into the 4%, which gave us some room to kind of downdraft. Now we're, we're basically right at kind of an area where it could drop into a, 
a weaker picture. So let's look at the UK. And here, um, I was in London last fall um, for, for a little while. And what you see here is we're sitting right at the prior highs again, 2018, 2020, 2022, 2023, all in this zone. Now, the really interesting thing about the UK is it has a declining trend line across the momentum for all of the months, um, going all the way back to 06. And each time it rallies, it makes a lower high. And here we are looking like we're rolling over um, for the, the month of May. And again, we're right down around that 20 month moving average in, in blue. And we'll watch to see how this performs. But again, we're just barely around that 2% level. So we don't really want to see this chart accelerate lower. So by going through these charts, what I'm trying to show you is that when we look at Europe, um, it's struggling to hold the breakout it had and early in the year. And now all of a sudden we've, we've seen the UK here. This is what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks of decline. And so um, charts clearly breaking. We're down around zero. Again, we're back below the 40-week moving average, uh, which is equivalent to the 200-day moving average, which is popular on daily charts. Um, but we've, we've, we're have we definitely breaking down here. And again, that, that red ceiling, that... Um, prior resistance level has really become important. So I want you to take note of, of how that worked out in Germany and in France and in the UK. That prior resistance has become a pretty important place on the charts. Now, I'll speed this up a little bit because we're getting to some of the um, other countries, but here was the monthly for, for Spain and it got to the highs of 2021. And again, you can see that this market topped out way back in 07 and hasn't really been able to get going. And there's this big downtrend in momentum, uh, briefly got above here, but this month already started to pull the histogram down. So it's getting a little bit weaker. Um, I don't have a weekly chart for that. I don't think it really matters. Greece is a phenomenal chart here. I don't know what's going on there, but there's definitely something going in. The PPO trend has finally broken to the upside. So this market seems to be on its own compared to the rest of Europe. And there's the weekly again, prior highs in around that 2021, 2022 level. It didn't pause here at all, took off to the upside. So I don't know if it's Greek shipping tycoons or what's going on there, but uh, that market's definitely strong. So here's Italy, and we're just getting back to the 2021, 2022 highs and struggling right there. And so we're starting to roll down a little bit. Again, we close near the low end of the month. Um, and we're making a lower high, even though we're testing the same price level, and we're in around three percent on the monthly chart. Now let's go to the daily or to the weekly. And what we see here on the weekly, we're getting close to that two percent again, that lower high in momentum, and struggling at the prior highs here. So another market, another sixty million people that really um, struggling to get going. Okay, leaving Europe and heading over into Asia, this is a huge important trend line for the Shanghai. And this goes back to 1992, where it kind of rocketed up. And then you see this big giant trend and we're sitting right around it. And the real question is, does this hold? And we end up, you, you can see the Shanghai market has consolidated here since 2015. Um, we had the tariff tantrum in 2018. And then... Um, Obviously, the COVID hit um, for most of the world in 2020, and then China um, had a st strict lockdown in 2021, 2022. And you can just see that this has not been able to really recover. So they've got a property market issue, and, and this blue line, again, is the 20-month moving average. And we closed back below it again, and last month was the first time trying above it. So tried above it and back below it. Not a, not a great looking chart. And we also had a big outside bar on the monthly. And what does an outside bar mean? Well, if typically what you see here is we had a, a price bar, then we tried higher and couldn't hold it. And we went lower than the prior month and closed in the bottom half of the bar. This kind of outside reversal is not very bullish. So for the Shanghai market, this is looking extremely weak. And again, got to the prior highs of 2022 and failed. And again, this is support and resistance. You see this kind of um, movement all the time. Now we're on a sell signal on the weekly chart here, rolling over on the PPO. So, you know, another chart around the world that's starting to show weakness. 
The Hang Seng, this market's monthly chart, really broken below the 20-month moving average. Not a very good look. PPO looks like it's rolling over again. And then if we go to the weekly chart, that looks like a series of lower highs and lower lows since the beginning of the year. So uh, PPO in negative territory, that's when it went into negative territory back in mid-2021. And you can just see it wasn't a really pretty picture. So, so far, Asia doesn't really, or the the Chinese markets um, do not look that great. Uh, the Nikkei is one exception. It's blowing out to the top here. And again, Warren Buffett was in there investing. So this is a pretty interesting one where it finally got above 2021-2022 highs. And now it's looking to get through the 1989-1990 highs. Um, so it's gone 30 years without making a new high. The Nikkei, um, again, just pushing up here. This is quite a remarkable uh, surge. Uh, for clients I've been mentioning, you know, if Warren's buying over there, there's probably something cooking. Here's the Bombay Stock Exchange, some of the best demographics in the world. And it's trying to break out through its prior highs. And those highs were only in December of 2023, unlike the US where a lot of the stuff, the prior highs were back in 21, 22, early 22. Um, Cosby, this market's actually perking up a little bit, trying to get above the 20-month moving average. Uh, if you're not familiar with where Korea is on the map, it's just off the coast of China. Um, and so what you'll see here is this um, this market appears to be wanting to turn up. The PPO is almost trying to give a cross on the signal line. And I would say that that's one um, chart that looks a little bit better in Asia for sure. Here's the weekly version of that chart. And we've been stuck in this kind of base and it looks a little bit like the S&P 500 trying to get going here. So, so far the Korean market looks good and it was starting to roll over here and break my uptrend lines and all that kind of stuff, but it did pull it out and looks like it's holding in. Okay, going to the south side of the equator, Australia made its highs in 2022 and 2023. Big downward slope in momentum here, much like we saw in Germany and in France. Uh, so we're watching a little bit to see, are all these countries all of a sudden going to start to break lower? And here's Australia again, got to prior highs, couldn't get through. So we're seeing that movie over and over and over again. And then um, Australia is rolling down here, trying to hold the 40-week moving average, but without question, a six-week decline. Maybe it can start to turn up anytime soon. That would be good. But again, not a lot of these countries are following that U.S. lead where the NASDAQ is taking off to the upside. Here's Russia, and it's trying to turn up on the monthly chart. Um, the weekly chart, you can just see it's been going up here for three or four months, but not at a very aggressive pace. It's just getting back to its 40-week moving average. Does it stall here? That would be the PPO right below zero. So nothing really too exciting there. Looking at the Canadian market, this market bombed out here for the month of May, started at the highs and closed at the lows. So this is one of those outside bars, like I mentioned, for the Shanghai. And there's also a big outside bar here for um, back in 2022 when Canada topped out. So these outside bars aren't something to, to forget about, especially when you close right on the lows. So um, it wasn't a really good um, month end close, let's call it. So that looks weak. When we go to the the chart again this support resistance line comes into play and it's all over the place so that's a problem now mexico real quick um trying to get through the 2022 highs and 2023 highs um hasn't been able to yet um has an outside bar here a small one but basically made a higher high and a lower low and closed below um prior month's action so not a very good look and then if we go to the weekly chart you know, it's just starting to roll over and break down at prior resistance. So how many times have I said that? Now, uh, I think we've all seen the U.S. charts. Um, I'll show you the Brazil weekly here. It, this chart's mixed up. I, I don't have any real kind of clear direction on where it wants to go. It's basically making some waves in a big sideways range for two years. Nowhere near support and resistance levels. PPO might roll over here below zero. So that would be an important place to look. Now, the U.S. market, again, I think I think we've all seen the weekly charts, right? We're trying to break out through on the S&P 500. And I have one interesting part, and this is on the quarterly chart. And the reason I want to show it is 
here was the move um, from the high to the low. And guess what? It was, we closed the quarter at 4,800. We closed this quarter at 3,600. And now we're sitting here at 4,200. We'll see where we end, but that just happens to be exactly 50% retracement on the quarterly line chart. So it doesn't get into um, where we were intramonth or intra-quarter. Okay, so the NASDAQ weekly, of course, is the big ballistic missile, nothing like it going on in the world. And so it's kind of on its own. And that's one of the reasons I'm a little more suspicious about it. Now, I do want to show, I, I want to show some of these charts over here. This is Apple. And what you see on Apple, it's right at resistance, going back to its 2022 highs. I think that's a reason to think about it a little bit. When we go to Amazon, it's nowhere near resistance near the highs, but it is um, in the range of where it was for 2022, kind of a, a resistance level, then a support level for a while, and then broke down out of there again. We're kind of hovering in that space. When we look at advanced micro devices, pretty much up near the highs. Right now, this is the support area for the highs it made back in 2021. And we kind of banging our head on that right now. We'll watch and see how we finish. Looking at Facebook, support or resistance level. This was support back in 2021. We're getting up to that level soon. We could go another, whatever, $30 higher or something and uh, try and test that level. Alphabet's already at that level where which was support um, and then it became resistance and now we're trying to break through it again. So again you see that support resistance. Microsoft is right at prior high so same problem as Apple. And NVIDIA um, again broke out really really nicely um, so it's one of the few charts in the world that has broken out so eloquently. And now here's Tesla again at that support resistance line. So you see um, the price action all through 2021 and 2022 got support here. Now we're rubbing up against the bottom side of it. So it's an important place to watch and see if it can break through. So what's the moral of all of this story is so many charts in the world rolled over at prior resistance. The S&P still sits near its prior resistance, so I don't want to say it can't make it through. But we're starting to see all these mega cap stocks also get back to those levels that were support and resistance areas on the chart. It means June's going to be a very interesting month for us to see if we can break out and kind of get more sectors joining into the party. Um, I, I think the bigger... Um, concern um, is is making sure that the industry groups you're in are doing well and cl clearly semiconductors and software are still holding up we'd like to see more of those groups get going that's the kind of work we're trying to do at Osprey Strategic I'm trying to get much better at uh, spotting industry group breakouts and again a big portion of the moves when you're in a stock will be that the industry starts to pick up as a whole group and starts to take off so we want to do a better job of trying to point into those trades as they start to work rather than just find one company inside an area uh, that doesn't really have the support of its peers. So thank you for taking the time to join me on Market Buzz. Market Buzz airs Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. You can also see the recordings on the Stock Charts TV YouTube page. And again, if you have any interest in things going on over at Osprey Strategic, I'd appreciate you uh, taking the time to head over there and try our trial offer for just $7. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.